All right, we have Demo Disc Theater again. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. I've been tied up with some other crap. Um, what is this? Issue number 24? Yeah, yeah, it's issue number 24. And we've seen this before. I mean, it's a cool little intro, but, I mean, how many times do I have to watch this? They tended to use the same, um, use the same intro video for a number of issues consecutively, and then they switched to something new. So they didn't do a new one for every disc, but there were a lot of different ones. They'd do it maybe like five months or so, then they'd switch. So Unjammer Lammy. That was a Parappa, the rapper sequel. I was... You know, I don't think I ever... I know, I never owned one of these games. It just wasn't something that I was into. I guess you could say that this kind of... Um, this kind of set the stage for what you'd eventually see with the... You know, Guitar Hero Rock Band kind of games. A rhythm game where you press buttons to match things that are going on the screen. Now, Parappa was popular, but not nearly as popular as Guitar Hero or Rock Band ended up being. So I guess the big difference ended up being the um, big difference ended up being the feel of the instrument in your hands. <sighs> I don't. I, <laughs> I don't know how to play this. So, oh shit! Okay, there's something going on. Okay, I didn't see that shit going on at the top of the screen. And the game froze. That's a problem that I'm just going to end up having to live with when it comes to these demo disc theater episodes. Oftentimes I need to change the settings in an emulator for any particular game to make it have maximum compatibility. And the problem with this, though, is that it just, um... So many different games are on one disc that you're just gonna have a hard time uh, finding options which are just ideal for every particular game. Okay, yeah, this I'm not finding this fun at all. I don't know what people liked about this. <laughs> it's actually a little bit stressful. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I guess considering it's something that I hadn't... I didn't really play before. It's my first time touching it in a long time. I guess I'm not doing terribly, but... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not even pressing buttons anymore. And I lost. I like the graphic style, though. What a nightmare. Oh, English. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Alright, that's the end of that one. Wasn't expecting English. Sled Storm. Clearly, it's like um, a take on the snowboarding games that were popular at the time, although it looks like we're going to be in a snowmobile instead of a snowboard. Don't remember this at all. There were a lot of these kinds of games. I mean, there was the big ones. You had Cool Borders, and you had um, the Extreme games, like 2 Extreme, 3 Extreme, and then you had... Uh, what was SSX? I think that came later. I think it was a PS2 era game. I mean, not terribly removed chronologically from this era. But it was a separate generation of consoles. I guess, uh, what was the N64? 1080, was it called? 1080 on the N64 was something like this. Oh, oh, geez, graphical glitches. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Oh, they got ahead of me. Okay, I gotta lean in. 
Yeah, I mean, graphical glitches aside, I'm assuming it was a graphical glitch, isn't that just not the way the game looks? I'd have to say that they did a pretty good job with this. When you compare something like this to, say, Extreme or to Extreme, the early games on the PlayStation 1, you really do see... You really do see a dramatic change. Ooh, damn. In what developers were eventually able to do with the hardware. I mean, I'd say the PlayStation 1 more than any console, really. Unless you, like, count some of the weird uh, SNES things, like with the SuperFX chip, which is kind of cheating because it's using separate hardware. More than any other console generation, I'd say the PlayStation 1 in particular showed a, an enormous change in what developers were eventually able to do with the same hardware. It was said the SNES was kind of cheating because it was separate hardware that was introduced later, which increased the machine's capability. Um, PlayStation 2 generation, especially with the PlayStation 2 itself, showed a big change also. Uh, the 360, I'd say, that showed a big change, especially when you... Oh, oh man. Freezing. When you compare the first Call of Duty game that came out, Call of Duty 2, I think it was for 360, then compare it to something like Cold War or whatever, I mean, it's an enormous difference, what it looks like. But compare this to Extreme or to Extreme. And it's like, wow, night and day. Kind of makes me wish that this doesn't feel terribly dissimilar to something like um, Jet Moto. Make me, makes me wish that, I mean, there were three Jet Moto games. I wish there was a fourth one. Like, what they eventually would have been able to do with that. on Even on the PlayStation 1. I mean, this isn't bad. I mean, they, I'm not into snowmobiling. Never ridden, driven a snowmobile before, so that's probably why. But, I mean, this isn't bad. I mean, I guess I would have had some fun with this back in the day. But, I mean, I'm comparing it to more modern racing games of this type, which, admittedly, there are a lot fewer of now than there were when this genre was really in full swing back in the 90s. You know, I'm, that's got to be that pop-up. That might not be a glitch. Oh, okay. Did I win? I don't know. <laughs> am I Ryan? I don't know who I am. No, quit. I'm not doing this again. No, no, get out of this. <laughs> okay, next up is NFL Game Day 2000. 989 Studio, oh, Sports. Oh. Okay, so, I guess it kind of makes sense that there's really only just a video of this instead of an actual, like, gameplay demo, because really oftentimes, from year to year, the sports games are just iterative. Now, I know people who buy any every um, John Madden game every year, buy every MLB game every year, buy every FIFA game every year, whatever. And to them, it's really just about staying up to date with, like, the roster. The roster is usually the biggest change that you see from year to year. I guess there are some, like, gameplay tweaks or maybe a new feature added or even removed but for the most part it's minor iterative changes between the different games in the series so you don't really need to drop a demo on people and like well okay a demo's nice and all that but it probably doesn't even get across the differences between the games so well then there you go there isn't really a change so a video just letting people know it exists is enough oh NCAA Game Breaker 2000. Two football games, look at that. Okay, so of course NCAA is going to be a uh, college ball, ball or collegiate, I guess is the better term for it. Okay, 989 did this as well. 
I guess it makes sense that they're going to do a professional league and then a collegiate league. You know, this... A little, I have a little bit of a problem with college sports because like, maybe they didn't... Uh, of course, they got the the school names here or where they're from anyway. And perhaps they don't actually have like a fleshed out roster as in every every player is going to be represented in the game. Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. I can't see that from here in this video. But it's a little screwy that these kids that are playing these uh, playing these collegiate sports are basically amateurs and they have to stay amateurs. They can't get paid in any way. And there have been a lot of controversies over students like accept, accepting gifts or something and it be considered like, oh, that's a payment. You're expelled or you lose your scholarship or something like that. What I'm bringing this up for is, is a possibility that in this game, all of the students' names at least were assigned to players in the game. And they probably had to sign their name away as part of a contract when they got uh, accepted onto a team. And they get paid nothing. You know, I wonder, is there... There probably isn't now, is there? But is there, like, a big uh, following of collegiate sports that they're going to... I know people follow collegiate football, but is there a big acceptance of it in, like, for video games? Did NCAA Game Breaker 2000 sell... I don't think we really have that kind of thing nowadays. But anyway. I mean, I know collegiate sports don't get as much attention as professional sports. And video games were probably cheaper to develop back then. But then again, it was done by 989, who did the NFL series. So probably it's like, well, we have the game engine. Just make the necessary tweaks. I wasn't really paying attention to see if it looked different. But anyway, moving on. Chocobo Racing. Chocobo Racing, an attempt to, clearly an attempt to cash in on the success of the Mario Kart series. I'm going to, I'm not the biggest Mario Kart fan. And a lot of people like look back to Mario Kart 64 as being like this groundbreaking game. I don't really see it that way. I think the original Mario Kart, the SNES game with its Mode 7 graphics and all that, was groundbreaking because it was really the first game of its time. It had the pseudo 3D environment that you race around and then it had the battle mode and all that. Kind of things you didn't really see before. Now by the time Mario Kart 64 came around, it was, it, I mean, we'd seen it. It had been done before. And honestly, like people still love the Mario Kart series for up to like Mario Kart 7. And I've spent a little bit of time playing those, and I honestly I just don't see the appeal. There's this big like Nintendo fandom that people treat like every Nintendo game that comes out like it's some kind of a masterpiece, like it's some incredible <laughs> it just took that thing out of its thought bubble. <laughs> like it's some incredibly peerless thing of game design, character, and all that kind of stuff. And this includes, like, Mario Party, which is just a dumpster fire of a game. The Mario Party games suck. They have no redeeming values. Come and fight me if you think any different. But anyway, I, where was I going with this? I was... What was the point? I was never huge in the Mario Party games, and the one that I did love was the original. Everything after that has been some varying degrees of, yeah, it's all right. So Chocobo Racing seems like they're trying to just cash in on the popularity of a different game, which I didn't really give a huge damn about at the time. But anyway, I remember this game as being a... I mean, I didn't spend a whole lot of time playing it, just this demo here. But I remember people saying, like, oh, you know, it's actually pretty, pretty good. Although, I don't know how, I don't know how to drive. Oh, it's square. <laughs> I was pressing X or or the R2 button trying to drive. Different times, people. Square was accelerating. Anyway. You know, I do see a bit of a difference between this and what we had to see on the N64 game. Because I know there was a... N64 games tend to do 
I guess with the design of the hardware, it was easier to have a larger environment on your draw surfaces and all that kind of stuff. Something the PlayStation wasn't as well suited for. But the PlayStation had more capacity for like higher resolution textures, environment detail, and all that kind of stuff. Oh my god, how do I get out of this? And uh, how do you reverse? <laughs> Just turn. So this doesn't look what like an N64 game would be. See, there are a lot more turns to stop you from going into an area where the environment just stretches off long into the distance. So the maps or the, the tracks feel different than we would see on an N64 game. Less straightaways, more turns. And I'm having difficulty negotiating those turns. But there's a lot of detail in the environment and there's a lot more texture detail than what we'd see on an N64 game. So it's different. I'd have to play Mario 64, or rather Mario Kart 64 again, to get a feeling on how this compared to that. This certainly does feel about the game slowing down, getting hitched. Hitching, rather. This isn't bad. Not something I'm ever going to play again, but it's not bad. Hmm. See, there's a problem that I have. Maybe I brought this up a few minutes ago. <laughs> But um, running this on an emulator does present problems. I have to adjust settings in the emulator to make each game run appropriately. And if there are six different games on the demo disc, well, the settings aren't going to be suitable for everything. And we're seeing that problem here. I doubt the original game on original hardware had these problems. Oh, look at that pop-in. Oh, you definitely wouldn't see that, or well, you probably wouldn't see that on an N64 game. But then again, you wouldn't see an environment that looks like this on an N64 game. You see a lot of texture reuse and all that kind of stuff. And of course, PlayStation 1 with its, what, 4 megabytes of RAM aren't going to have a lot of space. So, that's come to, come to accept that. I am losing by a freaking mile. Crashing into that wall. Up, oh, I'm tiny. Up, oh, tinier. <laughs> I am losing horribly. And the frame rate is just terrible. If I remember correctly, though, if I remember correctly, the game journalists and all that kind of stuff said that this game was pretty good. I don't know if I ever talked to anybody who was a fan of this show. Of course, uh, Final Fantasy had seen this big resurgence in the PlayStation 1 with Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9, and chocobos are a popular aspect of those games, so, you know, cashing in on the popularity of kart racers, as well as the popularity of this Final Fantasy thing here. Double dipping. <laughs> well, anyway, I lost. Moving on. Hong. Hong, really? I guess Atari was the name attached to the actual Pong series, but sort of like the tennis games, air hockey or whatever the hell it's supposed to be, were common among a bunch of different, not just Atari systems. But, oh, but you know what? The Atari logo was there. You know, the whole lineage of Atari is confusing. Because, I mean, that's the Atari logo, but I seriously doubt the company that made this was the same Atari that we're thinking of. Like the Atari with the Atari VCS, or 2600, the 5200, the 7800. It's probably not even the same company. And even then, looking back at like the 70s and the 80s, the Atari name was used for a bunch of different companies, and I'm not sure how they related to each other. Like, there was the arcade hardware company, which was probably the original company. Then there was the uh, company based around the VCS, the 2600, which I think was actually like either just a separate, like a subsidiary or possibly even a separate company, just 
associated with it. I, I, you know, I don't know. Then there was a computer hardware company, which I think was probably a completely different company on top of that. Oh, I missed both of them. <laughs> the AI is freaking terrible. And this game is... Alright, this is... Wow, the AI is really bad. It didn't even try to intercept that ball. It's probably a difficulty slider in the full game. This is just... Oh, wow, it, it is really bad. This is just some blatant attempt to cash in on old school game nostalgia. Because I mean, I guess a lot, I mean, I never, unless you're playing against another person, there really isn't any fun to be had in Pong. And this is just a weird 3D, add some penguins, Pong-ish thing. Pong really needs to be played against another player. It's more so the interaction with the other person than the game itself that made Pong any good. And adding in all the extra stuff, like the penguins and the environment and the 3D graphics, doesn't help. In fact, I think there are certain games that need to be simple. Pong needs to be simple. Tetris is another one. Needs to be simple. All that complicated crap just distracts from the simplicity and the quality of the game. Oh, man. All that shit I was talking on the AI being so bad. And I'm not winning. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. It doesn't... It, well, I mean, I guess it was a relatively low-cost game to develop. I mean, there's, not, there's nothing here. They could just assign, like, half a dozen designers or programmers or whatever. Half a dozen people on developing this thing. And if it sells 100,000 units, then they'll turn a profit. It doesn't need to be a huge $14 million seller like AAA games need to be nowadays. So, I won. Fantastic. I feel better about myself. <laughs> oh, it's restarting? No, no. Get out of this. Head back to the menu. Anyway, Pong doesn't need to be a thing. And Monaco Grand Prix Racing Simulation 2. Oh, it's a Formula One game. One I do not remember at all. I guarantee you I played this demo at least once. Because even by this point, I had picked up more games. And I wasn't so dependent on demo discs for my gameplay fixes anymore. I still played, at this point, every demo at least once. Even if it was something I didn't have any interest in. And, like, this Formula One stuff... Formula One is not popular in the U.S. I guess, like, uh... Stock car or NASCAR is really the popular racing in the U.S. Even though I can't stand it. And I've, I've been to, like, uh, drag racing, quarter-mile racing a few times. But it's something I do every few years. It's not something like... Every weekend I head down to the track and watch the... Oh... Emulator problems, no doubt. You know, it just occurs to me that I'm going to have to go and create an animation for the intro of this video. I didn't think of that. Recently, this is uh, it's March 19th when I'm recording this. And, or in the morning. And in the past month and a half, I've really not done it any video uploads, and the reason why I want to do a Demo Disc Theater episode is because it's something that I can... Oh, it's, geez, it's terrible. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hey, look at that. I want to do a Demo Disc Theater episode because I was thinking at the time, like, yeah, it'd be an easier thing to produce. Normally, the way I produce content is I will spend a day or so just recording and producing a lot of content or doing the bulk of the work on producing that stuff. And then I encode the videos and I'd store it on my hard drive. And then at some somewhat regular interval, I'll go and I'll post a video. The problem is in early February, I hadn't reached the point where I did like one of my production cycles and made a bunch of videos for a while. I hadn't done that for a while. And then I got sick. I caught COVID-19. It hit me pretty hard, not 
to the point where I was hospitalized, but I was, by my own logic I had at the time, came from a degree of uh, fever away from to the point where I'd uh, get taken to an emergency room. So I was pretty sick, but I wasn't, it wasn't about to kill me. Anyway, I couldn't, I did, I did nothing. I couldn't do anything for a week. I was dead to the world for a week. And then a week where I was barely functional. And then I started to get better after that. But, I mean, after 10 days, I had to return to work. And I found that, I got shit. Like, nothing got done in my absence. Everything just waited for me to come back. And that, so I fell into the cycle where I would... I'd go to work, and I'd be there for about 12 hours, and I'd get off work, and I'd go home, and I would sleep the entirety of the time between when I got home to when I had to get back to work, so it didn't leave me much in the way of time to produce anything, so I would just upload the few episodes I had remaining sitting in the back, in the backlog, and then, well, I uh, ran out of those pretty quick, and then I didn't have any time to produce anything else, and I eventually got better, I was like, I'm usually a person who sleeps between like four and six hours a night. I'm that kind of person. So it leaves me enough time to do this channel, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this at all. But I um, just couldn't get to it. And the recovery period is like, oh, protracted as hell. It took forever to get better. Shit, it's no joke. But I'm, I'm to the point where I can start producing things, and I got hung up on my Resident Evil thing. That took me a while. All the time I had. <laughs> then I tried doing another one. I'm still working on but it takes so much time. But anyway, I wanted to produce something that I figured I could produce relatively quickly. Getting back to the point that I was dragged away from. The point was that I wanted to produce something that I could churn out, produce an episode pretty quickly, and some sizable content. Like, these DDT episodes take, like, are like 30 minutes long, 35, 40 minutes, whatever. It's like it would only take me that long to make the episode, because I just record it and then I post it. It's like, oh yeah, that's right, the animation of the theater with the disc rolling out. Stupid little animation, but it's something I've sort of... Uh, fall in love with the idea of producing for every episode, and every animation, of course, has to be different. I got to texture map the different demo disc onto the disc that rolls out, and then I got to produce a different animation. And I can't reuse the same animation because I make a point of deleting the animation data when I'm done. So I'm forced to produce a new animation every time. And of course, I got to have rendering time, which, thanks to my my NVIDIA RTX card. And my uh, new renderers they have in Blender, which is the software I use it. It works pretty good. Did I lose? I lost. I guess it was in ninth place. <laughs> Damn, I'm a loser. But anyway, I have to produce an animation for this, and that's going to drag out the production of this. I'll have it up today. It's the... Uh, it's March 19th right now. I think it's March 19th. Yeah, it's March 19th, and I'll have this episode posted today. Of course, it's if you're watching it, I've already had it posted. Anyway, moving on. Oh, loading times could really drag out. Oh, no, 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 no. No, get out of this. I'm not doing this twice. I'm in Canada, though. That's the loading screen I wanted to see. Okay, we have... Vigilante... Oh! It's Vigilante 8! It's... Alright, skip over. Oh no, it's just a video. Oh, damn it. Okay, Vigilante 8. Clearly a... An attempt to... Move in on the popularity of the car combat games. Now, you could say that like uh, the Mario Kart games of car combat. But really, we're thinking of Twisted Metal when we think car combat. And the Twisted Metal games were awesome. The first one was a good game. The second one was a great game, at least in their time. Third one, not so much. I guess that's when Single Track either went out of business or lost their rights to it or something, and 989 started doing it. And the Twisted Metal games got bad. But then... 
Vigilante 8 showed up. Vigilante 8 was better than Twisted Metal, in my opinion. I haven't played it in a long time, but Vigilante 8, from what I remember, was a better game. I wish the series had continued. I think there are only these two from Activision. Oh, I kind of want to go and play Vigilante 8 now. Get a feeling, see if it was actually any good. It may not have been. <laughs> Misremembering. I do that a lot. Thrasher. Hmm. I kind of remember this game. This is another video. Anyway, Thrasher. Clearly a take on the Tony Hawk style, style game. Now, there was this sort of, like, increasing popularity of, like, X Games sports in the late 90s. And you had, of course, you had games like Two Extreme, or Extreme, Two Extreme, Three Extreme, and you had, like, the snowboarding games and all that kind of stuff, which sort of worked off the popularity of that. But then the Tony Hawk games brought the genre into a different direction, where it's less about racing and more about performing tricks to gain points. And you have a set time limit to do that. And Tony Hawk just did it so well. And, like, oh, wow, that's popular. And then Tony Hawk 2 just, like, did it better. And then you started to see all of the knockoffs, like Thrasher here. Now, this is a video, not a gameplay demo, but I'm going to make the assumption that it's not as good as the Tony Hawk games. I don't remember anybody talking about how great Thrasher was nowadays, but I do hear, Tony Hawk 2, awesome! So maybe this game is alright, but probably not as good as its competition. Oh, Rockstar, that was a Rockstar logo. Rockstar did this? Anyway, the... Tony Hawk was, uh the big deal, and I guess all the way through the PS2 generation, this genre of game was really popular, and you had a lot of different, you had a lot of different, uh, imitators. Now, Rockstar, I know, is a bit of a convoluted company, because there's a Rockstar name, which is largely just an umbrella name for a bunch of different development studios. So you have, like, Rockstar North and Rockstar whatever, I'm not sure what the origin of that was. I know it's... I, you know what? I forget who owns Rockstar. Rockstar is owned by another company. But you had... The lineage that I can think of was from the company that created Grand Theft Auto. And that was called DMA Design. And I know the first two GTA games, Grand Theft Auto, were produced by... DMA design, which every time I think of, I just think of direct memory access, which is a nerdy as hell reference, <laughs> which is actually probably what the company was named after. But you want to move away from the nerdy thing to something a little more a little cooler sounding like Rockstar. Rockstar rolls across the tongue better and is less geeky than DMA design. But I wonder if this is even the same studio, or if the DMA design is the core of what Rockstar is, or if that's just a studio that got brought under the umbrella. Toy Story 2. I have never played this. I'm certain that I never played this game before. Oh, wow, it actually looks pretty good, though, for a PlayStation 1 game. See, this is the kind of 3D that the PlayStation 1 actually did better than what you would see on the M64. Small environments that are packed with detail in comparison to what you saw on the M64. So you would see, like, Ocarina of Time on the M64, which produced this large environment that just stretched off into the distance, but there was, like, nothing in it. So, in one regard, it looked really impressive because the environment was huge, and you wouldn't have really a tooth pop in. On the other hand, PlayStation, which kind of looks less impressive in a lot of ways, has the smaller environments, but there's a lot more going on, there's more textures, it's less uh, blurry, because the textures aren't filtered. Of course, both ways of doing it haven't aged all that well. Activision did this, huh? Anyway, that was Toy Story 2. Maybe I might check that game out. Get a better idea of what it looks like. Where I can find it, though. Who the hell knows? Up, oh, I'm back at the beginning. That was it.
anyway, that was Demo Disc Theater episode. Well, you know what? I don't know what episode this was. It was OPM official U.S. PlayStation Magazine disc number 24, though. I forget what episode number this is. Oh, I'm bad at this. Well, anyway, thanks for watching.